Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Since my last test of Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, the developers did not only try to improve the performance of the game client and the server by, in example, preventing players from seeing the inside of the airplane or reducing the draw distance while in air. They also introduced ping-based matchmaking, which means that you should now mostly play with or against players who have about the same ping to the server as you have, which should result in a much more enjoyable online experience. However, you must keep in mind that a player might have a ping of less than 30 milliseconds when the match starts, and then later his ping spikes up to more than 300 milliseconds, which will then again cause issues like receiving damage far behind cover as you can see here. But when you die far behind cover, then that is not necessarily the fault of the player who shot you. It could also be your connection to the server that suddenly got worse. Sadly, PUBG still doesn't tell you anything about your connection to the game server, like your ping or that you have packet loss. An issue that can cause extreme ping spikes and packet loss in any online multiplayer game is buffer bloat. In the description down below you can find a link to a video where I explain what that is and how you can fix or prevent it. Now, if you haven't seen one of my other netcode analysis videos yet, then you should watch my netcode 101 video where I explain some basic things about networking, tick rates, update rates, network models, super bullets, lag compensation, packet loss and a few other things like how I do my network delay tests. The card overlay as well as the link in the description down below will both take you directly to that video. So while PUBG still doesn't show you any kind of network info, Fortnite provides network stats for quite some time now, which you can enable here. However, please be aware that this option only shows up in the menu after you join the match. And you must enable the network overlay every time you join a new one. I really hope that the developers will change this in the future. Before the 3.1.0 patch, you might have noticed that the ping inside the network overlay was much higher than the ping displayed for the selected region. This was caused by a previous update, which made the ping value include the processing delays of the game. This change then caused some confusion as the overlay suddenly showed a ping of 80 to 100 milliseconds, while previously it showed a ping of around 25 milliseconds. As a result, players suspected that the matchmaker was broken and that they got placed on servers outside their selected region. This was changed again in patch 3.1.0. However, as you can see here, the ping still shows way too high values in the early stages of the match and towards the end of the match the ping in the overlay even gets lower than the ICMP ping to the data center, which doesn't make any sense at all. So you should not trust this value too much right now. In my last video I showed you how PUBG's servers struggled quite a lot throughout the match, while Fortnite servers managed to reach a fairly stable 20Hz later in the match. That said, some people misunderstood what I said about the 20Hz limit in my last video. The Unreal Engine is not limited to 20Hz. It was the decision of Fortnite's development team to limit the server to 20Hz, as their goal is to achieve a stable 20Hz for the entire match before they try to increase the rate further. The PUBG developers set the limit to 30Hz, but the Unreal Engine itself is not limited to 20 nor 30Hz. The 100 players are what is causing the performance issues for both PUBG and Fortnite, while games like Battalion 1944 can run at a stable 60Hz on the same engine. So how did these performance optimizations affect the PUBG servers and more importantly, how does the player count affect the servers in both Fortnite and PUBG? This image here shows how many updates per second I received from the PUBG server during a match. When the first player jumped out of the aircraft, the server send rate was at 23 Hz, which then dropped down to 8 Hz when the last player left the aircraft. Then as more and more players got killed, the server send rate started to increase until it hit its maximum send rate of 30 Hz when there were only 42 players left. So while the server performance is better than two months ago, there are still some quite big drops in the server send rate throughout the match, which have a negative impact on the delay. When we then take a look at the results of two other matches, then we see the same drops in the server send rate and that the server performance is affected by the player count in the same way as it only reaches its maximum send rate of 30Hz when there are less than 45 players left. However, sometimes it takes a bit longer until that many players died, which might create the impression that the server's performance takes longer to improve while it's directly linked to the amount of players who are still alive. The situation is quite similar in Fortnite. The server sends 20 updates per second when the first player jumps out of the bus and the send rate then drops down to 10Hz once all 100 players left the bus. 
Then as the player count drops, which happens a lot faster in Fortnite due to the design of this game, the server's send rate starts to increase until it reaches its maximum send rate of 20 Hz when there are less than 50 players left. What you will notice here is that while the server's send rate is lower in Fortnite than in PUBG, it is also a lot more stable as it does not suffer from those massive drops. When we then compare the results of Fortnite and PUBG, then we can again see how the player count affects the server's performance, as both games only reach their maximum send rate when there are less than 50 players left. That said, it seems like PUBG manages to achieve higher server send rates at the same player count. However, the PUBG servers also suffer from quite big drops in the server send rate throughout the match. So the question is how that affects the actual network delay between two players. Before I show you the results of my network delay tests, I want to ask you once again to watch the Netcode 101 video first to find out how I do these network delay tests, as that is required to understand what these results mean for your online experience. Two months ago, Fortnite showed much lower network delays than PUBG, which suffered from some pretty bad server performance issues at that time. Now, after the recent optimizations and the introduction of the ping-based matchmaker, the network delay in PUBG got a lot better. However, when you look at the longest delays, then you can see what kind of impact those drops in the server send rate have on the player-to-player -player delay. Fortnite didn't really get any major network optimizations and so the results are very similar to those from my last test. Sadly, the developers decided to disable friendly fire and so I can no longer do the damage delay test as it is simply impossible to get my two test players onto the same server when they are not in a group. So far, I always showed you results from very early in the match, where you have the lowest send rate and thus the longest network delay. But today I also want to show you the delay that you get when the servers operate at the maximum send rates, so the best case scenario if you will. When PUBG's game server sends 30 updates per second, then this reduces the average network delay by about 12 milliseconds. However, you can still see the impact that these drops in the server send rate have on the player to player delay. When there are less than 40 players left in Fortnite, then the average delay does not only decrease by 10 milliseconds, the network delay is also lower than in PUBG, which is quite surprising as its game servers only run at 20 Hz, while PUBG's run at 30 Hz. This shows us once again that higher update rates do not necessarily result in lower network delays, and that Epic still has a lot of work to do until the Unreal Engine can maintain 20 or 30 Hz in games with more than 50 players. So that's all that I have for you today. I will keep you updated on the progress that the developers make and if you enjoyed this updated netcode analysis of Fortnite and PUBG then it would be great if you could support me on Patreon as YouTube's ad revenue is sadly not enough anymore to run a niche channel like mine. Without the awesome support that I get from my patrons, battle nonsense would not exist anymore. You can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you can also find links to my social accounts in case that you want to stay up to date on the videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.